Hey, Internet! It's Matt here for the Dork Lords. If you're new to the channel, welcome. We talk about all manner of dorkly things here, whether it's sci-fi, fantasy, superheroes. We probably have a playlist about it. Feel free to check us out. Today is another in our Dork Lord of the Rings series. And today I'll be giving my quick reaction to the season one finale of Rings of Power, Alloyed. I'll be doing a more in-depth recap with Paul later in the week. So the finale was essentially the reveal for two season-long mysteries. Who is the stranger and who is Sauron? Sauron turned out to be Halbrand, as most predicted, and the stranger turned out to be Gandalf, which most folks had somewhere on their Meteor Man bingo card. The name Gandalf or Aloran doesn't get mentioned, but it's Gandalf. And at the end, he delivers the line, When in doubt, Eleanor Brandyfoot, always follow your nose. And as most devotees of Jackson's Fellowship of the Rings will likely remember, that's Gandalf's quote in Moria. If in doubt, Meriadoc, always follow your nose. Just for completeness, the quote from the book that Jackson paraphrased and the Rings of Power then copied is, I have made up my mind, he said. I do not like the feel of the middle way. And I do not like the smell of the left-hand way. There is foul air down there, or I am no guide. I shall take the right-hand passage. And that brings up a trend of the show that I found increasingly tedious. Using quotes from The Lord of the Rings, whether the books or the films, to suggest a tie-in to the more familiar work. Earlier in the season, it happened with Bilbo's poem and Sam's words in Mordor. And here in this episode, we also got lines from Galadriel's speech to Frodo in the Mirror of Galadriel chapter. And now at last it comes. You will give me the ring freely. In place of the Dark Lord, you will set up a queen. And I shall not be dark, but beautiful and terrible as the morning and the night. Fair as the sea and the sun and the snow upon the mountain. Dreadful as the storm and the lightning. Stronger than the foundations of the earth, all shall love me and despair. Awesome lines, no doubt. But it's off-putting that all these lines get spoken thousands of years earlier, in some cases by completely different characters, suggesting that these are just lines that get said over and over again. It cheapens the impact of the lines. If you do it once, it's a fun Easter egg. Hey, that's the line from Bilbo's poem. But to go back to that well that many times, I mean, if you want to quote The Lord of the Rings, then tell The Lord of the Rings. It feels like lazy writing. The thesis statement of the season actually came very early on from Gil-galad. He says, she might have kept alive the very evil she sought to defeat. And just to drive home the point, he said, the same wind that seeks to blow out a fire may also cause it to spread. I think most people, including me, thought Galadriel would disprove Gilgalad's just ignore the problem and it will go away approach. But no, he was right. Galadriel is the dupe of the show. She is almost solely responsible for Sauron's rise in the Second Age. Thanks to her, he is able to con the Numenorians, the Southlanders, and the Elves. I assume that's because she believes Sauron's words that the elves will hold her responsible for his rise. But who cares if they'll hold her responsible? The elves are now in peril. And she's holding back vital information because she's selfishly worried about how she'll be perceived. So by the show's logic, she was flawed at the beginning of season one, and she's still deeply flawed at the end of the season. And that's frustrating for fans of the books because while she does have issues, she refused the pardon of the Valar, for instance. She's not this flawed in the Second Age. And I know that talking about the lore is unproductive regarding the Rings of Power. But something looking closer to the source material would have focused on Sauron's deception of Celebrimbor. He was the weak link that allowed Sauron's rise in the books. Here, Celebrimbor's interaction with Sauron amounts to a few minutes of screen time. And I think we now know why Celeborn was removed from season one. I think it was so that a seemingly widowed Galadriel 
could more realistically consider becoming Sauron's queen. She wouldn't have to betray Celeborn to do it. And in a vacuum, that's an admittedly intriguing story development. I think the issue is that for people like me, we prefer the show not exist in a vacuum. And you know what? That's my problem. It's not really the show's. The show has every right to choose its own path. It doesn't owe me anything. I learned from watching season one that for me, when it comes to Tolkien, and as authors go only Tolkien, I think, I can't completely disassociate myself from my expectations for how this story unfolds. I'd like to just enjoy the show on its own merits, and I gave it an honest effort, but my brain keeps pointing out inconsistencies. I'm like, did you see that? That's not a thing. It is what it is. So be it. So eight hours in, I can't say that I'm a devotee of the Rings of Power. Though people whose opinions I highly value really enjoyed the finale and the season as a whole. So if that's you, awesome. I'm glad you enjoyed the show, and I hope you enjoyed these reactions and recaps as well. Thanks everyone for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!